What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to West Virginia Astronomy. My name is Jonathan and it's a very exciting day today. I got my new scope in and this is the William Optics Red Cat 51. This is what you call a Petsville apochromatic refractor which means it uses four lens elements to correct false color, chromatic aberration. And just got it in today. I heard the scope really delivers a crisp clean image so Let's see what this uh, red cat 51 can do. millimeters at f4.9 so basically get the same brightness of an image in about a third of the time as I can with the William Optics C81. It's got a built-in field flattener so you don't need to buy an extra field flattener with it. It's got this angle rotator here so I'm able to loosen this clutch here to orient the frame. Really convenient. Um, I like the accents on here. It's got like a, a paw over here for the red cat signature and it comes with its patented Botanov mask and what that is that just uh, makes focusing with this telescope really easy and uh, pretty simple so I got two dew heaters on here right now got everything polar aligned from last night just waiting for it to get dark now we're we're going to be battling about 85% uh, illuminated moon I do have the duo narrowband the L Extreme mounted inside of the Red Cat and that's another thing here you can actually install a two inch filter inside of the threads in the back of the scope here. It gets the scope used so it unfortunately didn't have the red dual sided dovetail with it luckily I had this other Apertura one works just fine no big deal but yeah I got the guide scope mounted on top and the Red Cat handlebar here, pairing it with the ZWO ASI 183 MC Pro one shot color astronomy camera. That paired with the Red Cat at 250 millimeters, it'll bring me closer to around 500 millimeters, but I'll have a lot sharper image than I do with the Z81. We're going to put this bad boy to the test tonight and I slew around to a couple different targets just to see what things look like. It's going to be a fun night of astrophotography in the backyard with a new scope. scope to shoot out of uh, just makes everything uh, you can you're able to shoot all these targets that you shot closer a little further back it gives you a whole new uh, option of of targets so that's why I bought this scope just to kind of you know test it out and see if it really is uh, one of the sharpest lenses in the world because I know that's a bold statement so we're gonna put it to the test so first off we're gonna check focus here Go over here to preview, and we're just going to take a 10 second exposure and see if we're in focus or relatively close. And once that center spike is right in the middle of that X, we're in focus. So there we go, we're getting closer. Okay, so we got everything. We got it focused, we're already polar lined, so now all we gotta do is slew our target. So I think for tonight, I think I might want to shoot the Sol Nebula. So let me find it. Here we go.
All right, guys, we had some clouds roll in. This giant ring around the moon. And it looks pretty cool. Um, I think it's when the uh, the frozen water molecules up in the atmosphere kind of collide with the uh, the clouds or something. Um, it causes this giant ring to form around the moon. Looks pretty cool. So I think I got about 15, 10 minute exposures on the Sol Nebula. I switched over to the Rosette Nebula. That's what I'm on now. I switched to 300 second exposures for that. I'm about 10 exposures in. And now we got these clouds rolling in. Um, the forecast says clear, but I don't know. Hopefully they're just passing clouds that are going to go by. So throughout the night I was able to gather 15-10 minute exposures on the Sol Nebula, but the clouds did hang around, so we'll come back to that later. Then I slewed to the Rosette Nebula and captured 79 300 second exposures with the 183, and to show a field of view comparison with the DSLR, I switched cameras and grabbed a 45 minute exposure with my modified Canon AED and L enhanced filter. After stacking all the data and doing an HAO3 extract and APP, I was able to process this 6.5 hour exposure in Photoshop to create this stunning image of the Rosette Nebula captured from my backyard.